The Oakland A's have never played a game at Great American Ballpark. That is until tonight. It's the return of interleague play as the A's and Reds kick off a brief two-game series. And you'll see it tonight on your home for Reds baseball, Fox Sports, Ohio. And hi again, everyone, alongside Chris Welsh. I'm Jim Day. Thanks for joining us for Reds baseball. Well, the Reds will try to rebound after a tough weekend against the St. Louis Cardinals. They had a day off yesterday to regroup. But, Chris, the competition doesn't get any easier tonight. The Oakland A's, first place in the American League West. Yeah, but they're scuffling a little bit, Jim. They're a team that has played very well against the Reds overall. You see what they've done. They're two games ahead of Texas right now. They do it with pitching. Their starting pitching's been outstanding. They do it in one run ball games. They were 21 and 12 this year in one run ball games. They were good again last year in one run ball games and they also do it late in the game. They've got 31 comeback wins so it's a ball club that's not going to blow you out of the water but they hang around and they figure out a way to win. They have lost four out of their last five including losing two out of three at home to the Texas Rangers this past weekend. On the mound tonight we've got a couple of guys that neither one has faced the opponent tonight and Dan Straley and Matt Latos. Well, Dan Straley's a guy who actually played a little collegiate baseball not too far from here, Dan and Marshall. Uh, 17 games as a starter this year. He's one game over 500. He's got kind of pedestrian stuff, if you want to call it that. Not an overpowering fastball. He's got a very good slider and a nice changeup. He struggled his last few times out. Matt Latos has done anything but struggle his last couple of times out. He's pitched very good baseball. He's not really put a lot of wins on the board, mainly because the Reds haven't given him a lot of run support. But what he has done is not lose. So when Matt Latos takes the mound, a pretty good chance the Reds are going to be in the game late. This guy's a horse, and he's proved it every time he takes the ball this year. He is seeking a team-leading 11th victory tonight. On the other hand, Dan Straley, interleague play, he's been very, very good. Right, you're right. Look at the 3-0 record, earned right average under 9. He may be thinking, hey, Billy Bean, trade me into the National League, will you? I like it over here. Well, he's never pitched a great American ballpark. And believe me, the ballpark in Oakland plays like you said to me. Uh, you, or Grand Canyon compared <laughs> to what great American ballpark. So you get a ball in the air tonight and Dan Straley may realize what National League Baseball is all about in the Central Division, which is bye bye baseball if you get it up. And Dan Straley will have to pitch tonight. We're playing baseball the way it was meant to be played. You know the saying, get them on, get them over, get them in. Well, get them on. Chu has the first part down. We're talking leadoff hitting when we come back. game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Cloudy skies overhead at Great American Ballpark. What's in store for the rest of the night? Today's weather is brought to you by Tri-State Orthopedics. Here's Scott Dimmick from the WKRC Weather Department. Hello, everyone. I'm meteorologist Scott Dimmick. There are two great reasons to celebrate the game tonight. It's Joey Votto bobblehead night, and the weather's going to cooperate. 78 is where we'll be at first pitch. We're down to 75 for the final out. Can't rule out a spotty shower, but nearly everyone will be dry in and around GABP this evening. Enjoy the game. Shin Su Chu. From the leadoff spot, Chris, no one better in baseball getting on base. Well, the whole idea is to get on base, set the table, and Chu has been able to do that at a clip that is really amazing. Compared to what the Reds have had in the past, you can see where Chu ranks. First 50 home games of the year since 1921, and you're looking at some of the Reds' greats right there, and Pete Rose, Joey Votto, Dunn, and Morgan, all right around the same number, so Chu has set the bell very high, the level the very high, and he's reached it here in 2013. 50 games to go in the 2013 regular season. It is go time for Dusty Baker, Joey Votto, and Matt Latos. First pitch right around the corner on Fox Sports Ohio. Brought to you by the Ford Series F-Series Trucks, the best-selling truck in America 36 straight years. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Book your stay at CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Great American ballpark on Joey Votto bobblehead night. Good crowd on hand as the Reds and A's go back to interleague play. And let's check out the Oakland A's lineup tonight. Coco Crisp will lead it off. Eric Sogard riding an 11 game hitting streak in the two hole. Three, four, and five. Lowry, Suspedis. Brandon Moss, Josh Donaldson at third base, Josh Reddick in right field, Stephen Vogt behind the plate, hanging the signs for Dan Straley. 
on the hill, the big righty, Matt Latos, facing the Oakland A's for the first time. Well, start number 23 of the year for Matt Latos. It is start number 128 in his career. He, right now, he's 51 up and 36 down in his career. And it's really taken a turnaround from a one loss record since he came over and became a Cincinnati Red. No, no year better than this year, though, for Latos as far as that winning percentage. And he really ought to have about 16 or 17 wins right now. If you start thinking about the games that got away with relief uh, blown saves, uh, with times where he's pitched really well deep into a ball game, but not a whole lot of run support. But it really doesn't bother Matt Latos. He's a guy that wants to be the ace of the staff, carry this ball club. And after the kind of weekend the Reds had against the Cardinals, they really need him to step up here tonight. All right, let's check out the Reds defensively around the outfield. It'll be Robinson, Chu, and Bruce. Jack Hanahan getting the start at third base for the slumping Todd Frazier. Cozart is short, Phillips at second, Votto at first. Behind the plate, Devin Mazzaracco on the hill. Righty Matt Latos. Latos coming off of a July 30th start at San Diego. Went six innings, two earned runs. So a quality start for Latos, but the Reds lost that game four to two. And three starts since the All-Star break, Latos two and zero oh with a 2.41 ERA. He will face the switch hitting Coco Chris to start this game. Chris will step in with a 2.51 average, 10 home runs, 39 runs driven in. Resident of Rancho Mirage, California. Chris has been around the block, played for four different teams in 11 major league seasons. So a righty versus lefty matchup. It's Latos fires the first pitch in there for a strike, and we are underway. 81 degree first time, first pitch temperature here at GABP. Rather pleasant night. Plato's with the 0 1. Ground ball to Votto. Take it himself. One down. A good start for Latos. And he'll go to work against Eric Sogar. Two seventy three hitter two home runs twenty runs driven and he's riding a career high eleven game hitting streak. Over that time three sixty six average. Here comes big number fifty five. Up high. Uh, Leto has already shown he's got a pretty good fastball tonight. The one that he got a ground ball on Coco Crisp at the first base was 94. And when a pitcher starts out that, you know, he's got one extra day's rest under his belt this time around because of the off day. Sometimes you run the risk of being a little bit too strong, but for a power pitcher like Leto's, it's worked for him. One and one the count. We're just underway at GABP. And the 1 1. Just missed. Two one pitch. Grounded foul. Latos, two and one this year in interleague play. 3.51 ERA. He's been good in his career against the American League. Seven and three overall and 14 starts. Interleague play has not always been kind to Cincinnati. Reds are six and nine so far this year in interleague play. The A's 13 and five. And that is tied for the most interleague wins in the league. Well, it could be that Matt Latos' teammate, Mike Lee, gave him a little insight about Eric Sogard. After all, they were teammates together at Arizona State. Sogard, an infielder. Of course, Lee played a little first base there when he didn't pitch. 
Three two pitch fouled off. Sorry, picked up for Ike Davis at first base. They bring Davis in to pitch a little bit. Leak would come in there and hit and pitch. And Sogard, of course, was on that same Arizona State ball club. So we'll do the three two again. Hard hit ball into right field just on the line and fair. Sogard rounding first he'll easily go in with the stand up double. It looked like that ball hit right on the line if yeah. not right near. Yeah, in fact Joey Votto is going to go down there and talk to the first base umpires. Are you sure about that? That first base umpire is James Hoyt. And Sogard gets a lot of pitches on the inner part of the plate. That one floats over to the middle third or the inner third and Right on the white line it goes. Job by the ball boy down there to get out of the way. A nice little dance step. It was a nice little dance step, a little whoop de doo down there. So Sogard extends his career high hitting streak to 12 games now. So a runner on second, one out. And here's Jed Lowry. So Latos will face three straight left handed hitters. Chris, the switch hitter, hitting from the left hand side. But three lefties to start this game. Lowry, 289, eight home runs, 44 runs driven in. He has good numbers in his career against Latos. Even though Latos has never faced the A's, he has faced Lowry. Lowry, four for five in his career off of Latos, two home runs and five runs driven in. He's probably chopping at the bed not only to face Matt Latos but to face him in this ballpark as the A's have never played here until tonight. This time the A's were in town 2002. And that was a series to forget. He swept the Reds in three games. The 0 2 pitch inside. On deck, Ioannis Cespedes. One of the promising young players in the game, albeit he has had his struggles this year. The one two. Routed foul. The A's as a team have not, they've been going through the a funk like the Reds have been offensively, not as drastic as the Reds, particularly against the Cardinals over the weekend. But they themselves have been struggling offensively. Bob Melvin trying to get his team going. Another hard hit ball. This one just foul. Yeah, Joey Votto and I moved over a little bit. You know, the A's are going to run a lot of left handers out there. We saw that in Oakland when they really loaded them up against Bronson Arroyo. Well, they're going to do the same thing against Matt Latos. And with Sogard ripping that ball down the first base line, that bottom moved another step closer to the line because it's evident that Latos is pitching these left handers inside. Lowry's a switch hitter, but. When he's up there left handed obviously he's going to pull that inside slider. One ball two strikes one out man on second. Inside even up two two. Yeah. Mesoraka wanted that ball up. And Latos missed in a good spot he missed off the plate. But it could be that extra days of rest just gives you a little bit less feel for the baseball. Sometimes it takes an inning or two and you have an extra day. I mean. Pitchers are kind of like racehorses. You got to get them ready for race day. 2 2 pitch. Fouled off. And when you upset the workout schedule and the timing, it has, a, it, it kind of just messes with you a little bit. These guys have been pretty much in a five man rotation nearly all year long. Nice to have a day off, but sometimes you've got to figure out a way to make it work into your schedule. See where they're trying to get him is down and in. Lowry, they don't want him to get those arms extended and be able to rip the ball into the gap. 16 home runs last year. That's when he was with the Houston Astros. The 
comes the 2 2. In the air, left side, Hanahan in foul ground, makes the catch, two down. So a good battle there between Lowry and Latos, this time won by Latos. Two down for Jonas Cespedes. Looks like he took a little bit off this pitch. I don't know whether it was a two seamer or a change up a little bit. It came in there at 88 miles an hour, and you can see it looked like now that I see the spin on it, it was obviously a slider. And he got out in front of it a little bit just to pop it up. So very methodical. You see Matt Latos when he gets a runner on base, slows it down a little bit, realizes that the way his offense has been the last few days, you don't want to give up a run here and spot the A's an early lead. So here's the Cuban sensation, Yoannis Cespedes, the guy that put on a show in the home run derby, the All Star game at City Field in New York. And man, did he put on a show in batting practice, Chris? I don't know if you saw it, but he was routinely hitting it out of the park. He hit one of the smokestacks midway up, which is a shot. Oh one. Grounded foul. Last foul. seven games, Cespedes 333 average, couple of doubles, couple of home runs, nine runs driven in. So of late he's heated up. Yeah, that's what you want to know really when you're scouting a team. You want to know who's hitting well, who's seeing the ball well, who's having the hits fall in, because sometimes they come in streaks. But Cespedes, if you watch him at all, you realize he's a free swinger up there. And he'll hit a mistake about nine miles, but if you make your pitch, you're going to have pretty good success with him. And I would now say that pitch is going to be a slider down and away. O2 outside. And Cespedes could be in what they call a sophomore slump, even though he was a 26 year old rookie from Cuba last year, but he hit 292 last year. 23 home runs and 82 runs driven in and 129 games and hitting just 230 so far this year although he does have 17 home runs and 52 runs driven in. Yeah he's still over 100 at bats short of what he had last year with the A's and yet that home run total is just about what a, a little above the pace of last year so his batting average has gone down his power has gone up what that tells me is the guy is swinging more. They're beginning to pitch him a little bit differently, but he's still making contact with mistakes. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, man on second. The 2 2 pitch. Blocked by Mezzarocco. And we're full. If Cespedes is an all star in 2015, can you imagine him in the home run derby in this ballpark? Well, remember that <laughs> he was the first non all star to win the home run derby. And maybe by then they'll just bring in home run hitters for the home run derby. You don't have to be an all star. He was a fill in, and I don't think it's a bad idea, really. No. I mean, you want guys hitting the ball out of the ballpark, right? It's an exhibition for the fans. Put on a show, bring them in. Payoff pitch. Just missed inside. Boy, oh boy, that's where a, one of those at bats from Matt Latos had a, a good right handed hitter ahead. Oh, ball, oh, oh, and two. And then you see, tried to make him chase all those pitches down the bottom of the screen right there, and eventually ends up walking them. Crowd in the plate, big time. We've been the ball on the corner. Is going to seem inside to him. So two on, two outs for Brandon Moss. 244 hitter. And 101 games. First pitch to Moss. Breaking ball in there for a strike. We'll see if Latos can work out of trouble. And he's had to do it while taxing that arm. 25th pitch of the inning right there. Moss is another guy that's heated up for the A's. 
over the last 12 games. 350 average. A couple of doubles, home run, seven runs driven in in his last 12. Ground ball to second. Latos will get out of it. A's leave two. And the Reds coming up. Park. The Reds hope to rebound offensively, and here's how Dusty Baker will line them up tonight. Chu will lead off. Derek Robinson getting the start in left field. Three, four, and five. Ravallo, Phillips, and Bruce. Devin Mazzarocco moved up to the six hole. Zach Kozart batting seventh. Jack Hanahan in for the slumping Todd Frazier. He'll bat eighth. Matt Latos batting ninth. On the mound, 24 year old Dan Straley. Now six and five on the year Dan Straley is he's used to wearing that green after all he went to Marshall played for the herd when he was there he was a young man that somehow found his way to West Virginia despite the fact that he grew up in Oregon a very small town called Pendleton Oregon of about 18,000 people had no pitching help or coaching when he grew up but somehow he learned how to throw a baseball very hard ended up being drafted by the athletics and here he is in the major leagues a few years after being drafted in the 24th round in 2009. That is making it to the show the hard way. You're a 24th round pick and you make it. Yeah. First pitch strike to Chew. Chew 281, 15 home runs, 35 runs driven in. Fouled off. Chew has scored 73 runs this year. That's third. Third best in the National League. Like Votto, an on base machine. In fact, those two are 1 2 in the National League in on base percentage. Chu, 4 16 overall. 1 and 2 the count. Straley made an amazing ascension up the totem pole for the A's last year. Foul back. He entered the season having not pitched above a ball. By the end of the year, he was in the Oakland Athletics rotation. That's how quickly he moved up the chain. One two pitch. Softly hit. Not in time. The ball is hit so softly that Lowry just didn't have a chance to get to. Well, on base again, just like you said, the pregame show, Jim Day. This guy's been figuring out a way to get it done at a clip of around 43% of the time. And the little lob throw by Lowry really didn't set himself to be able to throw that ball. He had to go so far behind the second base bag, he just had to get rid of it quick and hope that you could not run the throw. Our Munchings furniture slow mo shows really an easy call by the first base umpire, and Chu leaves the bottom of the inning off with a base runner. A good start for Cincinnati, and here's Derek Robinson. Bunning in the air, not what they're looking for. First pitch bunning popped it up right to the first baseman Moss. Well, nothing wrong with first pitch bunning. I mean, that's a lot of his game, and sometimes you hit a, you know, you, you get under the ball, and if it's a true sacrifice, you want him staying in the batter's box and laying the bunt down. If it's a bunt for a base hit and you pop it up, sometimes that happens. And it looks like he stayed in the batter's box and it was probably a bunt for a base hit. I mean, it's no worse than swinging at a pitch right down the middle and popping up to the center fielder. So just because you bunt and make a what looks like a bad play like that, it's, you shouldn't put that part of your game in your pocket and forget about it. With one down, here's Votto. First pitch swinging. Votto 321 average as fifth best in the National League 17 home runs 52 runs driven in. We talked about him and Chu 1 2 and on base percentage Votto steps in with a 438 on base percentage best in the National League. And safe to assume number 19 won't be buddy. Clash of two different styles here tonight. National League team in the Reds will certainly lay down a sacrifice spot when they can. The A's, Moneyball, 
not what they're looking for. That's exactly what the Reds are looking for. Hard hit, base hit into right field. Chu goes from first to third, and with one out, the Reds are in business. Yeah, we've seen this happen more and more recently with Joey Votto pulling the pitches. You know, it, what I've seen is the the opposition throwing Joey Votto more and more inside fastballs. And he's always a guy that likes to use the left field. Well, if you're going to get pounded inside with a fastball, at some point you've got to turn on it. And when you've got a runner at first base, it opens up the right side, makes your odds a lot better, advantage to Votto, and he takes that advantage and runs it first to third. And it sets up Brandon Phillips. 83 RBIs to lead the Reds. It's third best in the National League, and he's got a couple sitting out there, including one on third base. You're right about opposing styles as far as that sacrifice bunt goes. The Reds this year lead all of Major League Baseball with 54 sacrifices. The Oakland A's are second last with only 13. I think Bronson Royal has about 13 himself. So, I mean, that's essentially. One of the rules of Moneyball, of course, Billy Bean, the main character that that Moneyball is written about, is the general manager and president of the Oakland A's, and they disdain the bunt because they feel that it keeps innings from being big innings. You may get one run, but maybe that inning you should have scored three or four. Reds have a chance here. One-one pitch, foul back. Well, this is where we've seen Brandon Phillips get better and better. Two strikes, spreads his feet, closes his stance down a little bit. The free swings are now done in this at bat, and Brandon Phillips is going to try to poke that ball more up the middle and then to the right side. He's got a lot of green space between first and second. Four fifty three hitter with less than two outs and a man in running in scoring position. That one almost got him. You know, Strayley is one of those rare right-handed pitchers who will throw a changeup to a right-handed hitter. Normally, what happens, a right-handed pitcher throws fastballs and breaking balls, curveballs or sliders to those right-handed hitters because they move away from the right-handed hitter, and then they'll throw changeups to left-handers because it moves away from the left-handed hitter. But that time, he tried to run one right in on Phillips, a little changeup, and was hoping that he'd get it in there and have him roll over on it. Now looks like John Hirschbeck says, hey, Brandon, time to get in the batter's box. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Ground ball to third. One and two, and the A's get out of it. What was that? A quick turn. We're through one. Scoreless at Great American. As they prepare for Purdue and find out what Urban Meyer said about his Buckeyes. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports. It's brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto. Drive safe, spend less. Matt Leto set to go to work in the second inning against the A's. Leto's worked out of trouble in inning number one. Give up a double to Sogard. Walk Cespedes. Was able to get Brandon Moss to ground out to end the first inning. He'll go to work against Josh Donaldson. Donaldson, Donaldson will hit from the right hand side. 294 average. And 61 runs driven in. Billy Bean also famous for converting guys. Different positions. Josh Donaldson converted from catcher to a third baseman during the spring of 2012. A la Scott Hatterberg, the former catcher, who famously moved to first base. On the team that sparked the money ball book. Like those behind 2 0. Donaldson, 27 years of age. He was acquired from the Cubs 
back in July of 2008. In the air to center. Hit pretty well, but Chu has got it. One down. Well, got behind him 2 0, but he ended up getting him out by keeping that ball away from Donaldson. Donaldson had a good run against the Reds in that two game series in Oakland. Here's the importance of Matt Latos throwing a first pitch strike. After when he gets that first pitch strike in there, that batting average is down under 200. After that, if he doesn't, the batting average is rises a lot closer to 300. So, you know, it just goes to show you some pitchers are better pitching behind in the count than others. Latos is lights out when he gets that first strike in there. Well, with that strike right there, he's now five of seven on first pitch strikes so far in this game. So, so far, so good. There you look at Josh Reddick's numbers. This is a guy that's in a season long slump. If you compare what he did last year to what he's done this year, he has been hampered dealing with a wrist injury for most of the season. But last year led the A's in nearly every offensive category. 32 home runs last year, 85 runs driven in. But he's won for his last 20 and his batting average entering today just 208. Long run by Robinson. Does he have room? He does. Two down. And with two outs, it's the catcher, Stephen Vogt. Vote was recently recalled from Triple A Sacramento. A's place catcher John Jaso on the disabled list with a concussion. First pitch. Ball one. They were worried about Vote as well recently in a recent game. He got hit in the head by a bat and a ball. Same game. They were worried about him having a concussion, but he passed all the tests. Right here, with a fly ball to Robinson. Still scoreless, a great American. That's coming up in the bottom of the second. A moment. We look forward to that. Hey, Reds fans, if a Reds player hits a home run and hits that Toyota sign during tonight's game, Darren McCaltz from Cincinnati will win this beautiful new Tundra. It's on display right now in Great American Ballpark. You can register for your chance to win at an upcoming game by visiting your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Jay Bruce will lead off the bottom of the second for Cincinnati in a scoreless game. Two seventy four hitter twenty two home runs that's fifth best in the National and his seventy four RBI is also fifth best in the NM. He's been a doubles machine this year as well. Thirty one doubles. Third in the list. Bow back. Well the Oakland A's really put the shift on and. They leave Jay Bruce a whole bunch of territory over there on the left side of the infield. I mean, you say right here is wide open. You see where the configuration is on the right. Now we've seen Jay Bruce really hit the ball more and more to left center field. And even say. the outfielders here are playing Jay Bruce fairly straight away. There's a the left fielder straight away, so you got all this room in left center field for Bruce. His reputation overall certainly it has been a full hitter but you're right this year we've seen him go the opposite way much more this season and the interesting thing is the A's are throwing him a lot of off speed stuff there's a fastball finally but they been pitching him away off speed figuring that maybe they get him out on his front foot he rolls over on it and he hits that ball to somebody one of those three gloves on the right side of the infield. 2 2 pitch. Off to the left side, now to play. Stays at 2 2. Kevin Mazzarocco on deck.
Here comes the 2 2 again. In the air to left center. Hit well. And gone. Jay Bruce. Home run number 23. And the Reds lead 1 0. They kept going away with it. We showed you where that pitch chart looked like to Jay Bruce, and he finally got one that he could put the sweet part of the bat on. A 91 mile an hour fastball goes the other way, right over that 379 mark. And the Reds had the lead with a home run by Jay Bruce. And with the crowd buzzing, here's Devin Mezzarocco. First pitch sky high. Second baseman Sogard's got it, one down. Well, he stayed back and hit that late. That's a key for Jay Bruce. Gets his foot down and it's not very much stride at all, but he hits it very late. That ball almost right over the plate. In fact, the back part of the plate when he makes contact, that's why he's able to drive that pitch the opposite way so, so well. That Exmo shot is awesome. You know, I wish I could have an Exmo shot of the facial reaction of Bartolo Colon when he <laughs> saw that ball leave the yard. I glanced down into the Oakland A's dugout and he was looking down there. Now he's the pitcher tomorrow, so he's he's been a while since Colon has been here, but he knows the ball can fly here, and that really affirmed it, that the fact that the ball will fly here. He looked at one of his teammates and took his head off and. Kind of shook his head a little bit and put it back on and said, uh oh. Swing and a miss by Zach Kozar. This place can two, get two. into your head a little bit. Swing and a miss, and Kozar's down on strikes. First strikeout of the night for Straley. And that'll bring up Jack Hanahan. Here's the A's defensively. Around the outfield, Cespedes, Crisp, and Reddick. Donaldson, Lowry on the left side of the infield. Sogard and Moss on the right side. Stephen Vogt behind the plate, hanging the sides for Dan Australia. And now with two outs, it's Jack Hanahan. Getting the start today for Todd Frazier. If you've been following the Reds closely, you know that Frazier's been mired in a Horrible slump. Ofer's last 28. And Hanahan and the only victory against the Cardinals over the weekend on Saturday, in my estimation, had the biggest hit of the game. Yeah. So with two outs in the first inning. And if he doesn't get that base hit, two RBI hit, then maybe the Reds are saying, oh, here we go again. We're leaving runners on base. But it really set the stage for that game. Now, granted, the Reds did not play good baseball over the weekend. But on Saturday, it was a good game. Well, you know, if you look at it back in spring training, it was a competition between Hanahan making the ball club. You know, it was pretty much given that Todd Frazier was going to be your starting third baseman. And it's not like Jack Hanahan's been tearing a cover off the ball all year long. I mean, after all, he's batting 216. But, you know, it's an ebb and flow. It's the guys get hot, they get cold, they get hot, they get cold. And sometimes you just have to get to the point where you got to give a guy a few days off. Other way into left field for a base hit. Very much like that big hit that he had against the Cardinals. That pitch was in the left field. That one went over just beyond the glove of the, the shortstop. But here he takes the ball going the other way again. So Hanahan gets the hit in the eight hole. And if nothing else, it'll turn the lineup over. As Latos, the pitcher, steps in with two down. Latos himself. He's shown if you groove him one, he could do some damage. Well, he's going to take a hack. I could guarantee you that. And indeed, he did. 0 1. Latos, six hits on the season, six for 48. 125 average. He has driven in four.
balls one strike two down Jack Hanahan on first swing and a miss. And the 0-2 pitch outside. The Reds trying to get to Straley, who has struggled in his last three outings. He's fallen short of going five innings the last two times out. Inside, even up 2-2. He actually made a move to kind of get his left elbow hit by the pitch right there. You gotta love that out of your starting pitcher. Instead of backing away from that inside breaking ball, they like moved in. So I'll, I'll take one hit, take one for the team right here. Lane into it, Rudy. Fouled back. Here's what I'm talking about right here. Watch Matt Latos just kind of lean in there. He yeah. did. <laughs> I think Walter Mathai was screaming from the dugout. Lean into it. <laughs> lean into it. I mean, you see guys do that with their wearing the protective armor, you know, on there. They've got the, the hard shell or at least a neoprene sleeve. But I mean, he's got nothing but a tattoo to protect him. Yes. A few of them. And maybe it's a, a powerful tattoo. It might be. By the way, that Walter Matthau reference was from the original Bad News Bears for you kids trying to figure it out right now. Strike three looking, but the Reds do some damage. Jay Bruce, solo home run, and the Reds with a one nothing lead. Ohio, these are best records in the bigs since last year's All-Star break. And the Reds and the A's doing business. The A's, best in all of Major League Baseball, 615 winning percentage. And the Reds, fourth best. 587 clips. So. Yeah, that kind of puts things in perspective for the A's. I mean, we don't read very much about the Oakland A's in Cincinnati, and they're not one of those teams, a glamour teams that gets a lot of press. Of course, they were in the playoffs last year. They won their division. They ended up losing to the Detroit Tigers three to two in the in the league division series there. They always have a bunch of characters. You ever notice they always got guys with long hair, weird beards. They're free spirited guys. They're always a free spirited team. You, you kind of think of Johnny Gomes, right? Johnny Gomes. Yeah. When Nick Swisher played for the A's, he had the long hair going Josh on. Josh Reddick last year had the, the big beard, long, beard, oh, long yeah. hair. Always got some characters. Oh, you stepped right out of a ZZ Top video. <laughs> Even back in the day. For those of you, you kids back there, that was a rock band back in. Back in the early days. <laughs> that is our second for you kids watching reference to explain what us old folk are talking about. There seems to be a bigger generation gap nowadays. We're just trying to help out. Matt Latos against his counterpart, Dan Straley. Straley seeking his first major league hit. In fact, he's only had one major league at bat. There for a strike. We're even up 2 2. The 2 2. Up high, and Latos a pitch away from walking the pitcher. Three two. Strike three look. All right, let's go to Los Angeles now for a Fox Sports One game break.
All right, thank you very much for that. We're back at Great American Ballpark. Reds with a one nothing lead alongside Chris Welsh. I'm Jim Day, Jeff Bacoro, Brian Giesenslaw roaming about. As Coco Crisp steps in for the second time. Started off the game by grounding out to Joey Votto. One oh pitch hit hard foul. One ball, one strike, one out. Inside. Leto seems to be slowing it down even though there's no one on. And we've seen him do that a number of times. As far as the starting pitchers go for Cincinnati, there's no question he's the slowest worker. Were you slow or fast? Well, it depends who is at the plate. <laughs> Some guys I just didn't want to pitch to. I was hoping that they would go away. <laughs> Interesting kind of setup that Coco Crisp has. Watch as he puts his chin right on his right shoulder. Guys have different approaches to keep themselves locked in, and that's obviously the key for Coco Crisp. Fair ball. Wow. Down the right field line, another close call. Chris has speed. He's on his way to third base, and he'll be in there with a stand-up triple. Well, that was as close as it could get right down there, that first base line. Matt Latos can't believe it. No argument from Joey Votto, probably because he didn't get a good look at it. And no argument from, from Mezzarocco. He's the guy that probably has the best look. We'll get another look. And it's where it goes over the bag or if it goes over the bag, not where it lands on the line after it goes over the first base bag. If it goes over that bag at all, and it looked like it certainly did, that's a good call by the first base umpire. The A's have reached a triple here in the, with one out. James Hoy down there at first base was all over it. And that last replay, it did look like it went over, caught at least a portion of that bag. Now they bring the infield in, trying to cut the run off at the plate. Latos has been prone to give up the triple. That's the seventh triple he's given up this year, tied for most in the National League. That's weird. That, I mean, that's just a downright weird stat. Well, Joe Lockup just handed it to me, and he's been known to give me weird stats. That would explain it. I mean, from Latos' standpoint, you have yeah. no control over whether it's a. And I wonder how many of those have been right down the first base line. Well, particularly pitching. All his home games in this park. It's a hard park to get a triple in. There's a chopper. Runner's going to stay at third as Hanahan makes the play on Sogar. One uh, down. You know what Two Coco down. Chris was thinking? He's thinking, man, I, I picked the wrong one not to go on contact. A high hopper like that where the third baseman has to wait for it and then leap to get it. I mean, Chris has the speed that if he broke with the crack of the bat, he'd put a run on the board. So Latos now has a chance of getting out of this inning and holding that lead. Yeah, that would have been a tough play at home. The way Hanahan came down, he would have had to adjust his feet to bring it home. And crisp, speedy runner. But with crisp at third, it's Jed Lowry with two outs. Lowry fouled out. His first time up. The O one inside his ace team. Talked about earlier, searching for some offense. Last 22 games as a team, they're hitting just 212. They've been shut out nine times this year, four times in their last 20 games, and we've been hearing stuff from Bob Melvin 
same type of things you hear out of the Reds clubhouse. We're having trouble putting two straight good games together. In the air, broken back. Latos is going to get out of trouble again. Reds, one nothing lead. The game for a spectacular post-game fireworks show featuring a soundtrack picked by Todd Frazier and presented by Bob Evans for tickets to see the Reds battle the Padres. Call 513-381-REDS. You can visit select Kroger locations or log on to reds.com slash tickets. Tonight's Ohio Lottery Mega Millions jackpot is worth $20 million. Drawing is at 11 p.m. tonight. Back to the top of the order for the Reds. Here in the bottom of the third, Shinsu Chu. Had an infield single to start off the bottom of the first for Cincinnati. Average up to 283. Continues to creep closer and closer back towards the 300. His last 27 appearances, Mr. Chu, as Dusty calls him, hitting 330. Included in there was a career high 16 game hitting streak. And against right handed pitching, it's been well documented. Off the charts, good. 332 hitter against righties. Righty Straley is falling behind 3 1. Straley, they sent him to Triple A Sacramento over the All Star break because they wanted to keep him in his normal pitching sequence as he walks Chu to lead off the third for Cincinnati. But since coming back, He's 0 for 3 with a 5.06 ERA. And as we said earlier, the last two times out, he has not pitched past the fifth inning. Or pitched into the fifth inning. Well, you even take it a little further than that, and Straley struggled to the point about giving the A's what you really want out of a starter, which is getting deep into the ball game. He, I mean, he's pitched into the seventh inning only three times in the last 10 starts. So he's a guy that when they get out there, you know, you're you're wondering when you're going to have to warm the bullpen up. Stephen Vogt has made a number of trips to the mound trying to figure out what he's doing, and it's a matter of saying, "Hey, how about throwing the ball over the plate right here? With your stuff, you can't pitch behind on the count." Derek Robinson hitting from the left hand side. He's a better hitter right handed switch hitter. And there for a strike one and one. They're watching from everywhere Chris. Even in Los Angeles. I just got a text from our boy Charlie Sheen. You got a text from Charlie Sheen. I did. And he said please read this on air. Even though I against my better judgment but I'm going to say it anyways. You two sound better than Buck and McCarver. Who are they? Well, apparently Just you kidding. sound better Just than kidding. McCarver. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. You're being too kind. Well, Major Reds fan, as you know. Hi, Charlie. He well, made a difference last year on the Marty haircut night, didn't he? When he presented a check to the Reds Community Fund for fifty thousand dollars. What a gesture. That's digging deep right there. Well, he's been a Reds fan all his life. That's what Straley's trying to do to Derek Robinson is dig deep into that kitchen because he keeps throwing them that fastball inside challenging Robinson to get the bat head out. Shin Su Chu takes his lead from first. One ball two strikes. Pretty good lead. Robinson swing fouled off. Robinson, a 233 hitter from the left hand side coming into tonight's game. 286 from the right side. 
one of those guys if he hits it on the ground anywhere he's got a chance to leg it out. Row over. Chu leads the Reds in steals. Just 12 though. This Reds team doesn't run much. He has been thrown out eight times. Outside even up 2 2. Here comes Straley with the 2 2 in the air to left. Easy play for Cespedes and one down. And that's really what you don't do not want Derek Robinson to do is get the ball in the air. I played on a number of teams where there'd be a veteran in that dugout that would say to D. Robinson as he walked by, say, hey, there's no money out there for you or no money up there for you. He need to get the ball on the ground a little bit. That's two times and two at bats that he's popped the ball up. And here's Votto. Singled his first time up. The Reds got nothing in the first. Phillips grounded into a double play. Oh. Yeah, Votto got pretty dirty from that slide in the second. Base on the the double play ball. That was a good turn by the the A's. Eric Sogard got rid of that ball in a hurry to turn that 5-4-3 double play. By the way, you mentioned how Charlie Sheen donated fifty thousand large last year. He donated another fifty thousand after that this year. I did not know that. To no. one trying to get that urban youth center built. So wow. I know. Well, they had to have a pitching man or a batting cage named after him in that place. You know what? They should. And I've proposed this idea that we need to bring him in as the wild thing and have him pitch to some of the youngsters at the academy. I like that. How about idea. that. We have to get on that. Two up. Swing and a miss. Big cut by Bottom. Bottom with a 5-12 slugging percentage coming into this game. Seventh best in the National League. And to see him slug one right here. Two balls, one strike, one out. Two on first. Outside corner. I don't think Votto liked that. Uh, two pretty good pitches right there. He went 2 and 0 to Joey Votto. Challenged him with a fastball, threw it 92 and threw it right by Joey Votto. Then he feathers a little slider on the outside corner. It's That's why I didn't like it. The perceived outside corner. Now the 2 2. Inside. Hit hard into right field. This will be extra bases all the way to the wall. Chu will be held up at third and Votto made a big turn at first and I tell you what Reddick made a great play out there in right field that ball was hit so hard and so hard off the wall right to Reddick that he held Votto to a single. Well, Reddick is one of the better right fielders you're going to see in fact we're treated in this series the two of the best right fielders in baseball defensively he's got a good arm he pursues this nicely. And he gets out to that warning track pronto. They're going to hold the runner a third the whole way. Chu gets a third easily. Botto has to stay at first. So now the same situation for Brandon Phillips that presented itself in the first inning. First and third and one out. And the way the A's got him out was they threw two breaking balls inside to Brandon Phillips with two strikes. They got it got him to roll over on a 5 4 3 double play. Big situation right here. Here's what they did in the first inning to get Brandon Phillips out. That one comes all the way in, and 
but Kendra's going to come out and talk to him and say, you got a better one than that. And he does do a better one, and he gets a round of horn double play to end the inning. So you wonder if in the back of Brandon Phillips' mind, he's thinking, am I going to get that slider again? It's the outside part of the plate. Strike one. You know, the funny thing about that pitch that induced the ground ball double play, that's not really where you're supposed to throw a slider to get a ground ball. It's inside to a right hand. That's very unorthodox. If he meant to throw it there, that's somewhat unusual. 1-1. One, one. Outside, 2-1. and one. But rarely do you have a game in consecutive at bats where the same situation presents itself. And you're the big RBI guy, and you grinded it into an inning ending double play. Now you get a chance though, for redemption. It comes a 2 1. Check swing. He held up. Well, that was the one that Straley wanted him to swing at. Just a little bit below the zone. That's a good pitch right there. But now he's down 3 1. One out. Runners on first and third. Now we're full. Well, that's a beauty of having control of your off speed pitches like Straley does. I mean, he gets into a fastball count. Brandon Phillips is betting the farm that here comes the fastball and he pulls the string on it. So if he'll throw it on a 3 1 count, you got to figure he will throw it again on a 3 2 count. Throw over. Really kind of trying to cut down that lead of Votto. Well, he's not a strikeout pitcher. He's got two strikeouts. One of them is Matt Latos. So they figure that on this, Dusty Baker will probably have Joey Votto running on a 3 2 count, even though there's just one out. Figuring that Brandon Phillips is going to make contact. A big pitch right here. And here it comes. Votto's going from first into left center field. It falls for a hit. Jew will score. Votto's on his way to third, and Brandon Phillips comes through. RBI number 84, and the Reds lead 2 0. Well, he battled the entire at bat. He finally got a pitch coming inside. It looked like a fastball. This really tried to jam him with, and he got unjammed right there with a little base hit in the left center field. Bottom's going to read this, and he's not sure the way that Coco Crispin run whether he's going to be able to flag that ball down or not. And he ends up at third base. Chu held up in the same manner at third base. So Straley gets a visit from pitching coach Kurt Young. And he's still got some work to do. Still first and third. Still one out for Jay Bruce. Last time up, Mr. Bruce touched up Straley for home run number 23 on the season. Well, you're getting texts from Los Angeles. I just got a text from Nizhny Tagil, Russia, where we have a huge Reds fan watching us with a couple of Russian friends, and he's teaching them all about Reds baseball. That would be Brian Abrams. And it's 6:15 a.m. He got his buddies out of bed. Say, come on, we're going to watch some Reds baseball. And what better place to teach him about Reds baseball than Russia? Are you referring to Reds? Yeah, Reds baseball. <laughs> I listened to the history class a couple times. Boy, the beauty of 
MLB TV. You just trumped my Los Angeles text. Russia! Russia! Wow. Two balls, one strike, one out to Jay Bruce. First and third. Swing and a miss. Big cut. 2-2. Two -two. Action in the A's pen already. As Straley is in danger of his third straight game not getting to the fifth inning. Jesse Chavez warms up the righty. Throw over. Phillips leaned a little bit, but didn't have that big a lead. Two two pitch. Folding. Two outs. Third strikeout of the game for Straley. Now he's pitched out of trouble each and every inning. And he gets a little breaking ball, it looks like. And he gets Jay Bruce just to kind of roll over on a fold completely. So with two down, here's Devin Mezzarocco hitting sixth today. It's the second time this season that he's hit sixth. Most of the time for Dusty Baker, at least the last couple of years, Mezzarocco and Hannigan mostly hit eighth. Well, the way he's been swinging the bat, you want to get him up there yeah. with guys on base more often. Bruce gets on more often than the normal number seven hitter, so, uh, so why not move him up a little bit the way he's hitting the ball? Saturday had his first career multi home run game. Not this time. Right center field, crisp is there. And he's got it. The Reds get another. And they lead 2 0. The Padres arrive early and be one of the first 20,000 fans to receive a Reds cap thanks to Fox Sports Ohio. For tickets to see the Reds and Padres, call 513 381 Reds, visit select Kroger locations, or log on to Reds.com slash tickets, and you'll notice that that hat is obviously. Green, white and green. Well, Saturday night is Irish Heritage Night. So the Reds are with Fox Sports Ohio going green as far as the giveaway goes. And I understand those hats were made from recyclable materials. So going green in that fashion well, as well. Recycled shillelaghs is what I've been told. <laughs> Care to expound on that? No. All right then. Here we go to the fourth. Cespedes will lead lead off. First inning walk, but was stranded. As the A's have stranded two in the first, one in the third. Latos has done his job so far. Here comes the big righty. Outside. Short. Ozark's got it. And one down. All right, let's go to Los Angeles once again for a Fox Sports One game break. Just keep on keeping on. And at some point, you have to start doing the math and figuring out what the Reds have to do in order to catch that Pirate Ball Club. 
chopper to Votto. He'll take it himself. Well, he could use another easy inning. He had one in the second. Latos did. The pitch count now. If he could get out of this inning with a minimal number of left, it would be very efficient. And that would help Latos go deeper into this ballgame. He's just thrown only three pitches so far in two outs. Cespedes and Brandon Moss retired, and now Josh Donaldson. Let me just look at it in one way. If the Pirates go one game over 500, 26 and 25, they'll get to 93 wins. And that's about reasonable. You might be able to think that they would do that from here out. Well, the Reds, in order to catch them the 93 wins, have to win 32 games and lose only 18. So that's a very good record in that, of course, every day that the Pirates win, it means you've got to increase your winning percentage a little bit more. Well, many of the Reds were vocal after the, uh, the tough weekend against the Cardinals. One of them, namely Sam LeCure, said, hey, we're running out of tomorrow's. We've got time, but we can't keep saying tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Granted, they're in the second wild card spot right now. They're Sam. Along with Mustache Cornelius. But the good news is, I mean, you have 13 games left between the Cardinals and the, the Pirates. So you have your fate in your own hands when you play the teams that are above you that many times. 1 1. Swing and a miss. Including which, don't the Reds and Pirates end the season playing each other? Yeah, they do. Those are three games here. The final homestand of the year will be three against the Mets, three against the Pirates. Foul back. The Reds will actually face the Pirates the final two weekends of the season. Three in Pittsburgh, September 20th through the 22nd. The final series of the regular season here at Great American Ballpark. So you've got six games right at the end of the year to make up time. And if you want proof that it can be done, just look at this Oakland A's club and what they did last year. They were 13 games out of first place at one point. And granted, the Texas Rangers had a collapse at the end of the season to aid them. The A's won the National League West. They were in first place one day, the final game of the season. In fact, Texas had a five game lead with nine games to play. That's how incredible it was last year. Five game lead with nine games to play. But Texas lost seven of their last nine, including five to Oakland. So that brings up that point of playing Pittsburgh at the end of the year. It can be done. Three two pitch. He walked it. Second walk of the game for Latos. And the two out batter will be Josh Reddick. Chris, you're right about seeing two outstanding right fielders in this game. We all know what Jay Bruce can do. But Josh Reddick has already proven what he can do in right field, but he last year won his first gold glove as an outfielder. First pitch to Reddick. Long drive, right center field. Bruce given chase. And he runs it down. What a catch. Jay Bruce saved a run. So speaking of which, one right fielder retired by another right fielder. Dealer or visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. We are back along the Ohio River. Queen City, Cincinnati, Ohio. Time now for our AT&T trivia question of the night. Two on this. What two players led the Reds in hits in the 1990 World Series? 
what two players led the Reds in hits in the 1990 World Series. Now, one of them's easy, if you know Reds history. One of them's easy, don't you think? Yeah. Considering we've talked about it a million times. And he happens to be in the stadium tonight. Not happens to be easy here a lot. And the same place every time he comes, same right? Same place. Comebacker, Kozar. One down in the Reds fourth. But the second one, I have to give a little bit of thought to. Well, the answer coming up. We're just a good old fashioned guess. Yes. That was a fun team to watch. That was the last time the Reds beat the A's here in Cincinnati. Game two, the 1990 World Series. Jack Hanahan singled in the second. Back in there to do more damage, at least he hopes. 70th pitch from Dan Straley, a swing and a miss. One one. Popped up. Left side. Lowry goes out. Then he's got it two down. Get ready, fans, for Fox Sports One. It's America's new 24 hour sports network. Fox Sports One will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, and shows and specials that only Fox could bring you. America's new sports network is Fox Sports One. It's coming August 17th. With two outs, pitch your Matt Latos. Pitch hacking in the air. Long run, but out of play. You know, you talk about the different styles of this of these two ball clubs, and money ball is one thing about no bunts. Rarely do you see a solo base of the Oakland A's, and you see more of that, obviously, more bunts, especially with the Reds. But the other thing where they really are very much polar opposites and how often they swing at the first pitch. The Reds are the nearly the swingingest team. In all of baseball, only the Atlanta Braves swinging more first pitches than the Braves. And tonight, the, the A's have been very, very prudent about going after any of the first offerings of Matt Latos. I think they've only swung up two all night long. So they're up there taking, making Latos throw the ball over the plate. I'm not saying one theory is good over another. I mean, if you do swing at Matt Latos' first pitch and put it in play, I mean, the batting average against this year is over 400. Hit well, center field, but Crisp is right there. Just one, two, in three th inning for Dan Straley. Yeah, just a difference in theories. Home run earlier in the game. Hey, good news to the Reds in the pitching front. Jonathan Broxton will be back to the team tomorrow. He last pitched on Sunday for Dayton at Indianapolis. He started the game, went one inning in that game, gave up a couple of hits, but 18 pitches. He has now pitched. Two innings, five strikeouts, and five hits in Louisville. He also pitched to Dayton. The key was going to be, how did he feel yesterday? Yesterday, he came back. Nothing wrong. He said, the arm feels great today. He went out in the outfield, threw long toss. He said, I am raring to go. Everything feels good. I was throwing all my pitches. Now, here's the thing, Jim and Chris. Don't worry about the hits because all he was trying to do was get his pitching in. And, Chris, you could talk more about that. He wasn't worried about the results. He was just worried about throwing his pitches. And one other note. Good news for Ryan Ludwig. He had his first home run tonight for Louisville as they are playing Indianapolis as well. It was a two-run homer in the first on his rehab assignment as well. Wasn't going so well for him. He was just two for 28 going into the game. He's now one for two tonight with that two-run home run. So the Reds will get help tomorrow. Jonathan Broxton will be back off the DL tomorrow in time for tomorrow's game against the A's. Guys? That is good news. We've well, been waiting for the big fella. Yeah, I think the, as long as you can come back and have, feel good a day after you're throwing 97 miles an hour, that's a good sign. Absolutely. And Ryan Ludwig, another good sign. It's really been spring training for him, so the numbers don't matter as much as the timing of which.
pick said he was two for 28 coming into tonight's game. I believe his rehab time is up Sunday. Well, so it won't forget, be long. We'll forget about the first 26 at bats then. Well, the key is is that he has there's no pain in the shoulder. There's just natural soreness that he's been reporting. And he's a notorious slow starter in his whole career. Right now he's in spring training mode and as Dusty Baker talked about before the game when you come up here all of a sudden the lights go on. Well, he's never had to start in August. Correct. Well, Joey oh, Otto took got two it. steps at yeah. that and then he decided, whoops, I'm going back to the bag and he may have just misread where Brandon Phillips was or how far he was off the bag. I don't know whether he would have had a chance to get that ball or not, but his body language tells you, oh my, what am I doing? Phillips nowhere near him, and yeah, he's got to go after that ball, even lay out for it. You can see the reaction of the pitcher, Matt Latos. That was a strange play, right? That's there. a gimme. No question about it. And uh, Bob Melvin's going to his bench. He's going to send up. Pinch hitter Seth Smith. So Dan Straley's night is done. And once again, he does not get to the fifth inning for the third straight game. Seth Smith, another guy that's been struggling at the plate, three for his last 36. Righty versus lefty. No outs. Man on first. Big cut and a miss. So close the book on Dan Straley. Four innings pitch, six hits, two earned runs, a walk, three strikeouts, and a home run. He threw 75 pitches. Popped up. Left side. Robinson's got it. One down. Here's today's IGS bringing the energy feature. Matt Latos, always oh, a strikeout kind of guy, has struck out 35 batters in 25 and two thirds innings pitched against the American League. And that's highest among National League starters 12.27 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. IGS bringing the energy feature. Latos has fared pretty well. His early career, seven and three record, 14 starts. Fouled out of play. Coco Crisp, one for two in this game, triple last time up. Steven vote at first base one down we are in the fifth alongside Chris Welsh I'm Jim Day glad you could join us for Reds baseball oh one Latos wanted that one body language would say so as much. And he's a guy not shy to bring the body language to the table. Well, he's always been an emotional pitcher, and that was one of the the knocks on Latos before he was traded over here to the to the Reds from the Padres. Looked like he had a point right there. Could be two, but Phillips right between his legs, and a rare error by Brandon Phillips, and it's going to cost him. Uh, two misplays on the right side of the infield. The first one for a base hit. The second is about as rare as you'll ever see. Like seeing an albatross walk across your driveway when you see Brandon Phillips misplay a ground ball like this. Particularly right through the wickets. He's thinking about a double play ball, and the ball just comes up on him and gets right through his legs. His head is down. That just took a high hop. I mean, sometimes a ball is going to do that. I mean, he didn't have that ball go under his legs, I mean, under his glove or anything like that. Just the way that baby took a hop on him, and now the A's are. In pretty good shape to push a run across. Second and third, one down for Eric Sogar. 
So this is where you really would love to be able to reach back and find a little something extra on your fastball and get a strikeout right here. Oh, up in the infield. And a hands there and a big second out. Leto's now at the 70 pitch plateau. And he'll battle Jed Lowry. Lowry 0 for 2. Bow out, pop out. Big at bat right here. Second and third, two outs. First pitch to Lowry, a pie. Wouldn't you love that with Devin Maserato? I don't know if you noticed it, but right before he put his sign down, he kind of made a fist like, come on, let's get this guy, let's get out of this inning. And when Lato's missed the spot right there, he's going to go out and talk to him a little bit. Maserato has been maturing right before our eyes, becoming more and more confident as a catcher and a hitter. But it's how he controls a game in a situation like this. I mean, Latos has more big league time than Devin Mezzarocco, but you still, you've got to take, take control of the pitcher sometimes when you see him straying away with his focus. No question, growing up right before our eyes. 1 0 pitch, inside and high. I've got a base open right here, but you have a. A very dangerous hitter in the on deck circle, even though he's right handed. Not so sure that you would intentionally or pitch around Lowry to get the Cespedes. Two zero. -oh. Up high. Got a couple of fastballs and a changeup, all of them up high, and you know the. The up high comes from just flying your, your shoulder open a little bit too much, trying to throw the ball too hard, trying to make too perfect of a pitch. Besides that first inning, he's been right on the beam. 3 0. In there for a strike. 93 on that one. Base hit could tie this up. Late toes to the belt. And the 3 1 pitch. Out back, and we're full. Well, this is what you love about Matt Latos. So the base is empty, batting average still not all that great. But with runners on and then runners in scoring position, that batting average gets lower and lower. That's a guy that adds a little bit of fastball and adds a little bit of tilt to his breaking ball. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Payoff pitch. And he walked him. Latos wants an appeal. He does get it. Third base umpire Jim Reynolds says, not this time. So we're loaded with two outs for Ioannis Cespedes. Third walk of the game for Latos. Uh, better than giving in right there with the base open. There's no reason to just pump a fastball right down Broadway to the number three hitter because you're afraid of putting them on with the base on balls. Latos has good enough control. And he'll be able to throw strikes when he has to. The Espinus, though, he'll be hacking at that first pitch if he sees a fastball that he likes. This is probably one situation where the A's will stray from that take the first one. Biggest at bat of the game so far. First pitch inside, ball one. Vote on third, Crisp on second, Lowry takes his lead from first. Three sixty-four average with bases loaded in his young career. 
Hard hit ball to Hanahan. He's got it. He'll get the out at third. And Leto strands three. And he keeps the A's scoreless. On Fox Sports Ohio, Reds Live has everything you need to know for that night's game. And it's only on your exclusive home for Reds baseball. Fox Sports Ohio. It's presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. All right, let's answer our AT&T trivia question. We asked, going well, back to 1990, what two players led the Reds in hits in the 1990 World Series? One of them, standing down to first base, Billy Hatcher, the first base coach for the Cincinnati Reds. And Spuds, Chris Sabo, nine hits each in that four-game sweep of these very same Oakland A's. What a moment that was in Reds history. The A's came in. Winning the 89 World Series. No one gave the Reds a chance. To not only win the series. Let alone sweep the series. They dominated. That series after going wire to wire in the regular season. I'd like to see another one of those happen this year. Would be nice. It's been a while when I started doing math back to 1990. Blevins, a left hander, in for the A's. 50 games now for this often used left hander. Went to college at the University of Dayton, played for the Flyers after he grew up in Arcadia, Ohio. That's up in the northwest part of the state. Drafted by the Cubs originally, and when he was a Cubs farmhand, is when he got traded over to the Oakland A's organization. They assigned him right to Double A. Seventeenth round pick in 2004. Chu, hard hit ball, right center field. Chris, long run, dive. He can't get it. It goes to the wall. Chu will stop at second base. And a leadoff double for Cincinnati. Well, Chu has done his job as a leadoff hitter. He's been up three times. Each time he has come to the plate, he has led the inning off. So that's the idea of a leadoff hitter getting it going. A single, a walk, and now a double for Chu as he gets a pitch up in the zone against a left-hander. And gets the Reds rolling here in the fifth. Long run by Coco Crisp. It's a long slide, too. It really was. Like a slip and slide out there. 26 double for Chu. Now Derek Robinson will be butting here. Pulls it back outside. Good sign for Chu as well. Time he driving the ball like that off of a left handed pitcher. Hopefully gets back in one of those grooves that he was in April. Yeah, Although I'm not was. sure anyone could accomplish that again. He was incredible. <laughs> it was nice to see. See if Robinson will square around again. He does. Yeah, Robinson really doesn't square around, and you don't see that as much often anymore at all. What they teach nowadays in pro baseball is more of a swivel or a pivot. Because when you completely square around, you lose the conception, you lose your idea of the strike zone. And plus, when a ball comes right at you, you have no way of getting out of the way of it. So you just kind of turn, but the idea is to get your head down there close to the bat. Reaches for it, didn't get it. One and one. Mark Barry given the signs. Boy, Bear looks better and better every day. Feels yes. better and better every day. The battle he went through. Pro cancer. I tell you what, he's one of the best third base coaches in the game. The team really missed him. This time, Robinson gets it down. Gets the job done. In fact, then some. Chu's going to score, and the Reds have a 3 0 lead off of the gaff by Jerry Blevins. I don't think we've seen this all year long. It has easy a play right back to the pitcher. Blevins fields it. He's not even thinking about going to third. He makes the right play of getting it, turning. And then just throws a ball just simply over the head of the 
covering second baseman. That is a great look at him deadening that ball. Off the bat. Here's Votto. A man in and a man on first. You're scoring at home. E1. No RBI. Credit a sacrifice for Robinson as well. Votto has reached safely in 13 of his last 16 plate appearances. That is an 813 on base percentage. Yikes. 13 of 16. It's <laughs> getting it done, Lefty. But he's doing that better than he ever has before. And he's really the standard in this National League by which you judge everybody else as far as being able to get on base. A couple of singles on the night. Levins looks like he wants no part of Votto. Well, he's in there this part of the lineup because you're going to face a lot of left handers. Choose left handed, obviously. Votto, Bruce is coming up. Robinson, a switch hitter. Two balls, no strikes. Boy, good hitting count right here for Votto. That's a pitcher's pitch on a 2 0 count, and that's the kind of pitch if you swing at it. If you get too anxious in the in the batter's box and you think, I'm going to hack at this 2 0 pitch no matter what, you're going to make yourself an out. That is right at the bottom of the strike zone or even a little bit below. Home plate umpire tonight is crew chief John Hirschbeck. And Votto had a few words after that pitch with Mr. Hirschbeck. Foul ball. I always love how Votto, when he doesn't like a, a called strike on him, looks down at the dirt while he's talking to the umpire. He's always cleaning up the batter's box after pitches. But. You know, that's what hitters do a lot of times when they have a bad swing. They'll clean up that batter's box in a way of kind of sweeping out the bad feeling, even the bad karma, and getting back in there with a clean batter's box. Starting all over again. 2 2. Down low, we're full. We've been doing it after a good pitch. Pitchers will do the same thing around the pitcher's mound. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I read an article one time by a psychiatrist or psychologist that kind of talked about the act of sweeping the batter's box clean. Wow. You buy into that? You know what? This game is as much mental as physical. I buy into it. Even more so, more and more. Yeah. There's no question. So, anything to help out psychologically yeah. in that batter's box, all for it. Even if it includes choking up. Three two pitch. Got him on an off speed breaking pitch. And a strike him out, throw him out by the A's. Robinson going on the pitch. So just like that, the A's get two outs. I think Joey Votto is about as stunned as anybody. Just did not read that breaking ball at all, realized it was strike three. Not a real good jump at all by Derek Robinson. He wanted to make sure that the pitcher was going home before he went. He just could not outrun this play. That was a very late break. So two outs in the inning and the base is clear. Here's Brandon Phillips. Phillips has driven in one of the three runs for Cincinnati. RBI single last time up in the third. RBI number 84. For that dude BP. I wonder 
people would like to hear you call the whole game. One time through the lineup, it, just referring to the players by their Twitter handle as opposed to their, their wow. real name. We could probably could you do, do that, that off the top of your head. Uh, I could get a couple of them. Well, I could get a couple. I got that dude BP. I mean, we all got. You know that what? Guy. Well, Frazier's not starting tonight. But do you know what he is? Flava Fraze. Flava Fraze. Okay. There he is. Who else do you know off the top of your head? Uh, let's see. Jay Bruce is uh, J. A. Bruce, I think. Pretty good. Jack Hanahan, I know, is on there. Don't make me Google him up. Well, I haven't memorized them. They just show up on my time. Yeah, that's true. It's like having speed dial. You don't even know your own number anymore. Exactly. One, two. Two, two. Well, don't make me get on Twitter. <laughs> Again? Might have to do a live in game tweet. Two two pitch. Ground ball to third. Long throw and a scoop on the other end by Moss. Did the Reds get a run. They lead three nothing. Honda game summary so far. Three runs on the board for Cincinnati. Kicked off in the second inning by Jay Bruce's 23rd home run. It was a solo shot, made it one nothing. And then Brandon Phillips with the big two out hit right here. RBI number 84 on the season. Scored Chu. Chu has scored twice in this game. The A's helped him out. Jerry Blevins, Aaron, throw to first base. Chu would score from second. And that's where we stand. Three nothing. Cincinnati as we move on to the sixth. All right, let's head to LA once again for a Fox Sports One game break. Sure, I want Bryce Harper any piece of him. He's the type of guy that if you punched him, he probably wouldn't feel it. Well, the frustration that has to be emanating around that Washington Nationals team, the team that a lot of people predicted to be maybe the best team in the National League this year. They find themselves four games under 500, 13 and a half games out of first place. And boy, the heat of the summer, the frustration of losing, the injuries that Harper has sustained. And Throughout the season, not the way the Nationals thought it would go. There were many, and I mean many, that picked them to be in the World Series and certainly win the National League East. Now, I bet you there are a lot of Nationals fans saying, should have thrown Steven Strasburg last year in the playoffs because you never know when you're going to get back. As a rock go. That does not count. That's off our camera. We've never had that happen. I before. believe that went off our camera. Yeah, I think it's still working. Check it out. Nice catch on the rebound, though. Boink. Robotic camera behind home yeah. plate. That little game pad to make that thing move around, right? The thing it's robotic. Cameraman would have been fleeing. Brandon Moss takes the first out of the inning. Latos continues to cruise on. Now go to work against Josh Donaldson. Donaldson flew out, walked his last time up. 294 hitter. Oh. 
Check swing. John Hirschbeck says he went. Strike one. Interesting year for Donaldson. He had 16 home runs in the first half, and he's had a power outage. Not one home run since the All Star break. Swing and a miss. He's chased out a couple of times. He it did have a very good series against the Reds when the Reds went out of the Bay Area for that quick two game series. Had a couple of home runs, five runs batted in. He's behind 0 2. O2 pitch. Got him looking. Uh, the best slider of the night right there for Matt Latos. We're going to take another look at it with our Mazda pitch by pitch. Matt Latos, Josh Donaldson leads them all with a breaking ball. Check swing right there. It's on the corner anyhow. Then he goes high heat. Donaldson can't lay off of it. How about going right back down there again for the perfect slider? And see you later on three pitches is Josh Donaldson, our Mazda pitch by pitch. Only the second strikeout of the game for Lightos. But he's given up only three hits. And it's really odd because Lightos, strikeout guy, strikeout guy, came into this ballgame just a couple of strikeouts behind the team leader, Homer Bailey. Another guy, Tony Singrani, strikes out around one per inning. It's actually more for the for Singrani than that if you. He just doesn't have enough innings under his belt to qualify for any of those type of uh, categories. And then you have two guys in the rotation that don't strike very many out at all. Leak and Arroyo. 0 2 pitch inside. Reddick 0 for 2. Fouled out a second. And was robbed on a great. Running catch by Jay Bruce in the fourth. There's another deep drive, but the Bruce is right there. Three up, three down for Latos. Five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At Bat delivers Reds baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826. That's at bat to 31826 or visit reds.com for details. And after the game, stick around. It's Reds Live, the post game edition. You'll hear from the manager before anyone else. Locker room reaction. It's Reds Live, brought to you by Kings Honda and the Kings Auto Mall. Visit kingshondausa.com. Bottom of the sixth. J. A. Bruce leads off. That is his Twitter handle. Solo home run in the second. Part of three runs on the board so far for Cincinnati. As Jerry Blevins, lefty, of the University of Dayton, begins his second inning of work. We also had D. Rob 104. Oh, you looked him up between innings, huh? Well, I got yeah, a couple. That dude BP. Jack Hanahan nine. Flava Frage. Corky Miller has one and I cannot remember what it is. Looked up a few of them. Have you follow all those guys? I on do. Twitter? I do. Make sure they keep in line. Don't act a fool. Which I can sometimes do on Twitter. Well, at least being up here in the broadcast booth during the game doing play by play keeps you from doing that. There's I could do a live tweet right now if you want. And it's a pleasure to have you up here. Chris, I am blessed to be sitting in this chair. There's no question about that. 3 2 to count to Jay Bruce. Payoff pitch. Right three looking. Well, he knew it too. You know, for a while there, you think that John Hirschbeck has a big strike zone, but the last couple of strikeouts he's gotten of Reds left handers, Votto and now Bruce, they've come on different pitches, but they're both real strikes according to pitch, pitch tracks. And 
Not one bit of complaining from either of the Reds hitters. That's going to do it for Jerry Blevins. One out into the sixth inning. As he will call on the righty, Pat Nishek. It's our skyline chili call to the bullpen. Angeles to battle Yasiel Puig and the National League West leading Dodgers. Fox Saturday Baseball begins this week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Those Dodgers are on quite a roll. They beat the Cardinals last night. It was their 15th straight road win. That is too shy of the Major League single season record. They're in the fourth right now in St. Louis and they're scoreless. We got a new pitcher on the hill. Chris, it's righty Pat Nishak. Yeah, Nishak, it's interesting. The A's are bringing some pitchers from around the Midwestern area. In fact, Reds country. Last couple of guys. Jerry Blevins with the Dayton. Hello. Deep drive. Left field. Going back to Cespedes, and he's got it on the track. Blevins with the University of Dayton, and Nishak did his college baseball at Butler University, where he still holds a strikeout. Record for 18 in a ball game against Detroit. And you can see where he could really paralyze right handers. He comes from down around Laredo, and that's a tough arm angle for right, most right handers to pick up, although it did not fool Devin Mesoraco one bit. That's like what we've been talking about with Mesoraco. I mean, he's been hitting the ball so hard, he's lined out to the third baseman a couple of times in that Cardinal series. I mean, balls right on the button. Last year, Mazzarocco, you could tell. I mean, young player, it always, they always go through that where they're just trying to not really say anything, just trying to fit in, et cetera. And as you said, he's, he's much more aggressive this year, calling games behind the plate. We've seen him go out to the mound to talk to Matt Latos. Dusty Baker has talked about him following the game plan more and more closely, learning the league, learning the hitters. It's the toughest position on the field. Well, it's the toughest to become a veteran. My ball center field. Chris going to his left. He's got it. And a 1 2 3 inning for the A's. 3 0. Reds lead for this season. The Kroger Meal Deal. Check concession stands throughout the ballpark for the Kroger Meal Deal, which includes a hot dog, 16 ounce Coke, chips, and during this homestand, emerald nuts. Make sure you to get your Kroger meal deal during your next visit to Great American Ballpark. Three nothing. Red legs. It's Matt Latos climbs the hill for inning number seven. And before the game today, a nice little ceremony recognizing Cincinnati Moeller for winning the state championship in baseball. Congratulations to the Crusaders. Boy, they have just been dominating they have. Ohio baseball. They've made the final four, I think, five of the last six times. They've won the state title the last two years. They're sending a lot of kids on to play at the next level. I think they've got 14 or 15, maybe 13 or 14 of their players that have already committed to playing in college, anywhere from University of Kentucky to Miami to Marshall. University of Evansville, Dayton, Ashland, Manchester College, and Furman. So there's a lot of good baseball being played in Ohio, and much of that is being played right up on Montgomery Road and Muller High School. They played it for a long time. The two most famous alums will both be in the Hall of Fame. Mary Larkin. And Griffey Jr. See, and Joel Luckup was sitting behind you, waving his hands, thinking, "Are you talking about me? Are you going to the Hall of Fame, Joel? Is there something I don't know? Do they have a wing for statisticians? Yeah, they've got a broadcaster's wing now. Someday they will. They w what would they name it? The Daddy Wags wing, maybe? Be a good name. Would. May he rest in peace. 
Now, Matt Latos has simply battled and battled. He's only had two, one, two, three innings. He is bent, but he is not broken. He's given up a double and triple in this ball game, and really only three hits overall. He's walked three, but he pips out of a real tough jam in the fifth inning when he had a misplay at first base and went for a base hit, and then an error on Brandon Phillips. But he picked his teammates up by getting out of that with no damage. And it's you know, all of a sudden again you're here you are in a Matt Latos ball game and you're in the seventh inning and he hasn't given up anything. I mean, sometimes it's a couple of runs tonight he's given up nothing but goose eggs. Three two pitch out back and he is not afraid to pitch inside. I mean if you're a young pitcher at home and you're watching this ball game. The one thing that you should take away from this performance by Matt Latos is his ability to come inside on left handed hitters fearlessly. He's not coming in there and drilling them into ribs, but he's not leaving it over the center of the plate when he comes in either. That ball is in on the hands, and that's the way you get the lefties out. This has got it, one down. And it takes a while. For pitchers to do that, and some never get it. I mean, it's so difficult sometimes for right handed pitchers to get in on left handers because they're afraid of leaving the ball out over the plate or they're afraid of missing inside and, and hitting the batter and then putting a base runner on base. That's the one thing that has made Matt Latos a solid major league pitcher a long time ago his ability to control the glove side of home plate, and that would be the first base side. Here's pinch hitter Chris Young. First pitch strike. Young has had some success off of Latos. Latos in his career. Five for 14, a double and a home run. His numbers, as you just saw, not so stellar overall this year. The one pitch out back. Latos ahead 0-2. Latos nearing the 100 pitch count. And I'm sure he would love to make quick work of Chris Young right here. And perhaps have a chance to pitch in the eighth, although the pitcher spot, he is due up second in the bottom of the seventh inning. So we'll see what happens. And that would indicate that he might be done after this hit. Cure lefty Manny Parra warming up in the pen from Cincinnati. One ball, two strikes. Got him looking. Off speed pitch and a beauty. So all three strikeouts from Matt Latos tonight have been the looking variety. He gets Chris Young right here on another slider, just touching the outside corner. This has been kind of a looking strikeout night. In fact, the Reds have struck out also three times looking. That's six of them in the game. That's an odd number. Back to the top of the order for the A's and Coco Crisp. Bounced it. Rito's looking back at the mound. Took a good hop though. Maybe a little bit low. He's gonna do a little work on that mound. One and oh. Ground ball to Votto. Gets it on the short hop. Takes it himself. A one, two, three, seven for Matt Latos. He is bound to a three nothing lead. Three nothing. Reds lead. We'll face another pitcher. Bob Melvin has called on righty Dan Otero here in the seventh. He's moved around a little bit already, Dan Otero, in his career. Ended up starting his career in college at Duke University. Transferred to the University of South Florida where he pitched for a year. Then the Giants drafted him. 
But twice this year he's moved around. He got claimed off waivers by the Yankees and then claimed off waivers later in the same month by the Oakland A's and he has been there since. One strike on Jack Hanahan. Hanahan one for two singled back in the second. I take that back. He was claimed off waivers by the Oakland A's on March 29th and then designated for assignment after Stephen Boat came over in a trade from the Rays. And he went down to the minor leagues and then brought back up. The life of a, a fringe player in the major leagues can take a lot of different places through a lot of transactions. All about that major league service time. And an opportunity just to get out there and compete at the major league level. Hoping that this is the year or this is the game that starts a streak that gets me on the kind of career that you dream about when you're a kid. And you also dream about that one magical word, pension. You get enough service time, you get a pretty good pension as Otero strikes out Hanahan, one out. It's a six strikeout by A's pitching tonight. Yeah, it looks like it does a little off speed pitch right there and he, that has the effect of a left handed slider moving down and away from the Reds third baseman. So the question is answered Matt Latos will hit he will pitch in the eighth. Sketch what a fan right there catch. All right now come on give it to the wife you, you, you got to give it up once you catch it. Oh, he's getting some congratulations. Oh, he's going to hold on to that bad boy. <laughs> Might be stuck. It caught him up high. He's got him right in the grill, but made a nice catch. One one pitch to Latos. Base hit in the right field. Said if you groove one to Latos, he can do damage, and he does right there. He takes a swing right here like he knows what he's doing. A little inside out whack. Line drive right past the first baseman into right field. With one out and one on. Back to the top of the order and Shin Su Chu. By the way, we'd like to thank Papa John's for the grub tonight. Little Za here in the booth. Good stuff. Taking care of the crew. We appreciate Papa John's. Well, they delivered it. It was hot, ready to go. There was a line forming here. Yeah, after you got out of the way. Well, nothing wrong with a little Zah. Why, why wait for 11 strikeouts? <laughs> I just had kind of a feeling we might not see 11 strikeouts tonight. No, not that type of night. Plato's is pitching very well. Three strikeouts so far. The producer for tonight's game is Brian Hunterman. Our director, Uncle Roy Alvers. Associate producers are Lauren White and Kevin Penwitt. Reds Live producer, Kent Dreamweaver. Coordinating producer is Bob Pennell. Executive producer of Fox Sports Ohio is Tom Farmer. And we even had the big guy here as Chu hits one. Nice diving stop there at second base. They'll get the lead runner, Latos. Sogard going to his left made a nice stop. Robbing Chu of a base hit, and perhaps keeping the Reds from a big inning. We'll see. Tell you what, you're right. He takes about two steps and then dives, and that ball is just hit like a rocket shot. That's the kind of play that we're used to seeing Brandon Phillips make. You know, knocking it down is just the first part. You got to get yourself in a position where you can throw the ball, keep your eye on the ball until it's in your hand. What great camera work right there. And he flips that ball to the shortstop to get the lead out. Some of these replays nowadays are amazing. Now oh, we got the best crew around with us. When you can see the eyes of the defender like that, you just get the whole gamut of the play. Good stuff. Throw over. By the way, I was mentioning we had the big guy in the house, Francois McGillicuddy, the general manager of Fox Sports Ohio. Paying a visit, which he often does. It could be good or it could be bad. 
Did he bring HR with him? Well, I, I always ask, particularly <laughs> when Tom Farmer comes here, uh, you don't have any folders with you, do you? Ground ball second. And three outs. The Reds will go to the eighth with the lead. It's a three-peat. Cincinnati Children's ranks third in the nation and U.S. News and World Report's 2013 Best Children's Hospitals for the third year in a row. And brought to you by Chevy. Stop into your Tri-State Chevy dealer today and check out our full line of fuel-efficient vehicles. 3-0 Reds lead in a rematch of the 1990 World Series. Remember game one? Check it out. Hatcher running. The pitch is swung on. A high deep drive to center field. It may go. It will. Home run. Eric Davis explodes the first pitch thrown by Dave Stewart onto the concourse in center field. Hatcher scores in front of him, and Cincinnati has taken a first inning two to nothing lead. Gives me goosebumps right there. Doesn't matter how many times I watch that. You know, he still looks like we just saw him on that West Coast trip. Marty with the call, of course, on that one. And Eric Davis still looks like he, does. he did back in 1990. He says he could still hit. He just can't run. I said, if you got five at bats, could you get a hit? He said, I get two. <laughs> but he no said either. he couldn't run. He would need someone to run for. But he looks great. That set the stage in 1990, that big home run off of Dave Stewart. Gosh darn, do you miss Joe Knox or what in the background? Hear him in the background, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> I used to love that. By the way, I got a very nice letter from Don Zetta, Joe's wife, surviving wife of Joe Knox. And she wrote me a very nice letter talking about me getting the opportunity to call play by play and Don Zetta, I know you might be watching out there. I just want you to know it was one of the best letters I have ever received. Wow, it was great hearing that. from you. It was tremendous hearing from you. Uh, what a wonderful family. No question. Kim Nuxall continues on the charity work that his dad started. The miracle fields that they have uh, done up there. Giving uh, less fortunate children the opportunity to play baseball where otherwise they would. Terrific fan. And Matt Latos now with 105 pitches, 2 2 count on Eric Sogar. My ball right. Easy play for Bruce, one down. Now let's take a look at our subway in-game box score and better numbers. Chu set the table tonight. Double single scored twice. Vado continues on. Brandon Phillips, this team leading 84th RBI tonight. Jay Bruce, home run number 23. Now the Reds aren't the only ones watching the scoreboard. I mean, with the way the Oakland A's have played recently, and they lost four out of their five last games during a homestand. In fact, in those four losses, they only scored four runs. They've been very good in interleague play. They figure, and Bob Melvin's thinking, well, maybe we get back in the National League, we'll do better. Fair ball down the right field line. Another one of these. I mean, that is the third ball that is. I mean, hug the. First base line as tightly as you can hug it. Eric Sogar did it in the first. Coco Chris did it in the third. And here Jed Lowry has done it. So the top three hitters in this lineup have used that white chalk right down the line as a as a landing strip for their ground ball. James Foy has been busy down there. Dusty Baker on his way to the mound, and that's going to do it for Matt Latos. 108 pitches into this game, and he's going to get a big ovation. Standing ovation for number 55. Latos to this point. Goose eggs across the board. Just what the Reds. Now the hint of old spikes. Not a lot of strikeouts in the game for Matt Latos, but a couple of them right here looking. 
Josh Donaldson goes down. So does the pitch hitter Chris Young. Both on sliders, both perfect location pitches for Matt Latos, and that is our whiff brought to you by Head and Shoulders with a hint of Old Spice. But what an outing for Latos! Seven and a third, no runs, three hits, three walks. Leaves a runner at second base for J.J. Hoover. J.J. Hoover has been outstanding. He's got a tough task here in Jonas Cespedes. Oh, that's a good yacker there. Man. You know you have a good curveball when the hitter buckles. There you look at Hoover's overall numbers. He's got a 20 inning scoreless streak riding right now. Over 17 appearances. Fly ball right. Bruce is there. Two down. Big out. Lowry stays at second base. And Hoover. Half. Half the way there. Getting out of this eighth inning. And preserving a three nothing lead. Attendance tonight 34,640. Very nice crowd for a Tuesday night. It is Joey Bobblehead night. Presented by Formica. I'd like to thank Formica. I believe they recently celebrated 100 years here in Cincinnati. Staples, longtime staples here in the Queen City. First pitch swinging is Brandon Moss. Phillips from his knees gets it to Hoover. What a play. Night in, night out. We've come to expect it. Gold glove stuff. Reds lead 3 0. It underway in the second inning. A solo home run is 23rd off of Dan Straley. Gave the Reds a 1 0 lead, and right now, thanks to the pitching of Matt Latos and J.J. Hoover, that's the difference in the game. Well, the Reds lead 3 0 as Joey Votto leads off the eighth. Dan Otero still on the mound for the A's. Hard hit ball, but right at the second baseman, Sogar. One down. By the way, should have mentioned this much earlier. But the Reds ultimate good luck charm is back tonight. Have you noticed the guy getting the bats tonight taking them out there. It's our man Teddy Kramer. Come on with it Teddy. Give a little hitting advice to Jay Bruce before he's ready to go in there and take the, his spot in the on deck circle. He infuses energy like no one I've ever seen in my life. That guy right there. I'm not sure he's had a bad day on this earth. Look at Teddy in action here. Double flaps going on, a little dancing, keeps it loose down there. He's a hustler too. Love when he hustles after the bats. After that Jay Bruce home run, he was doing his march. Chair into the sky. Don't think it's a coincidence that he's in there tonight after what happened over the weekend. You better believe it. Foul ball. Two on the count to Brandon Phillips. They're in the fifth in St. Louis. St. Louis with a 2 0 lead over the Dodgers. We'll get an update on that game here in a moment as St. Louis trying to snap the Dodgers' 15 game road winning streak. And they're still tied at three in Pittsburgh. They've gone to the ninth, 3 3. Marlins. And Buckos. Pirates had bases loaded, nobody out in the eighth, and didn't score. Brandon Phillips ground out to short. All right, here we go to Los Angeles. It's another Fox Sports One game break. All right. 
right. Can't wait for Fox Sports one. And the Cardinals. Trying to even up that series after losing last night to the Dodgers. As Jay Bruce steps in with two outs. In the bottom of the eighth. Chopper, second base. A one, two, three inning for Dan Otero. We'll go to the ninth. Nice with the Reach Magazine family deal. Plus, the first 8,000 kids, 14 and younger, receive a Kids Gapper book. It's presented by PNC Bank. Don't miss your Red Lake, your chance to see the Red Lakes take on the Padres this Sunday. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or log on to reds.com slash tickets. Some restrictions do apply. Zeros across the board. And for the Reds, they hope Aroldis Chapman can put another goose egg up there and save number 26. Well, he's got 25 at 29 right now. He's not had a save yet in the month of August, although we're still early in the month. His last save came when the Reds were visiting the Padres in San Diego. He did pitch once in that Cardinal series. That was in the one ball game that the Reds won, although it was a big lopsided score by the time he got in there. He pitched an eight to three win. Three run lead to protect. Bottom of the lineup coming up. He will face Josh Donaldson, Josh Reddick, and Steven Vogt here in the ninth. Six, seven, and eight in the order. Chapman following Latos and Hoover. Latos, seven and a third, four hits, no runs. Hoover, two thirds of an inning, no runs. This A's club has been shut out four times in their last 20 games. The Reds hope to make that five. And the first pitch. Off speed pitch and a strike. Off speed, if you want to call 86 off speed, that's Not fastball for some. Compared to 106 yes. or 105. We've got that documented. Oh one. Out off. Chapman ahead. Oh two. Chapman did not pitch when the Reds went out to Oakland to play them back in June. He pitched at the front end of that road trip. In fact, he pitched twice in Arizona and once in Texas. Over the two game sweep, the A's put on the Reds there at the Coliseum. Chapman did not get any game time. Only four A's hitters have ever hit against Chapman Alberto Cayaspo, Jed Lowry, Seth Smith, Chris Young have hit against him. No one has got a hit. One two pitch. Side and high two and two. And nearly took the arm off of Mesoraco. 100 miles per hour. A few more like that and you wonder if maybe one arm will be longer than the other by the time the game's over. They might be. Those are hard to catch. <laughs> I mean, it's coming in there at a blink of an eye to start with. And then to have to get your glove up backhanded. Or faster than a blink of an eye. Yes. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Strike three call. Time now for a John Morrell hot dog play and Jay Bruce. Went a long way to get this one. Rob and Josh Reddick, beautiful catch right on the edge of the warning track. And that saved most likely a run. John Morrell, hot dog play of the game. I think it's time for Mr. Bruce to win a gold glove. I couldn't agree more. About time, people.
First pitch to Josh Reddick in there for a strike. The aforementioned Josh Reddick with that catch on Bruce. Boy, over three like, on the night. Oh, no, like in the middle of an over, and then have to face Chapman in the night. Particularly as a left-handed hitter. And we'll give you the numbers again of a Rolls Chapman versus lefties in his career, which are unbelievable. Left-handed batters are 19 for 179. 106. I don't believe it. It's it's really an unbelievable stat. I mean, you literally almost have no chance when he's on. I mean, granted, we've seen a Rolls Chapman where he's had some control issues, and we've seen him give up the long ball. If you square it up. It'll go. One two pitch. Just missed the inside corner. Chapman wanted that one badly. Two balls, two strikes, one out. We're in the ninth. Reds protecting a three nothing lead. Here comes Chapman. Swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts for Chapman, and the Reds are one out away. Nasty stuff. So it's left up to pinch hitter Derek Norris for the A's. Chapman trying for save number 26. First pitch ball. There for a strike. Took a little off. It's weird to say that you take a little off and it's 97 miles per hour, but that's what you get with the world as Chapman. Crowd to their feet. The 1-1. One, 2-1. One. Trying to go 11 games over 500. Outside three and one. Oh, look yeah. what you started. Look what you started. Well, we started a long time ago, but when you really need it, fans are coming out tonight on Boat Time Tuesday waiting for Chapman to put the final out of way. Those are some good looking boat ties. Barkley. Three one pitch. Foul back. So off to the right side behind the Reds dugout. And we're full three and two. Pirates have just won four to three. Cincinnati's Josh Harrison with a home run. They just keep on keeping on. Well, the Reds trying to keep pace. Right now, the Reds need to just worry about themselves. Get back on track, and they're a strike away from doing that. The 3 2 pitch. Deep drive. Left center field. Chu going back, and it's gone. 
Pinch hit home run, Derek Norris. So the shutout is gone, and the A's have life. He had a couple of swings and he gets one right down Broadway and Aroldis Chapman knows it immediately. Tell by that reaction. From Chapman although that barely got out. Here's Alberto Callaspo. The A's recently traded for him. Angels and he is hitless since coming to Oakland. One and one. Eight year veteran Kayaspo. Over ten since being traded. Overall, in an 0 for 17 skid, dating back to his final days as an angel. He's up there to pinch hit right now. 2 1 pitch. Out back. 2 and 2. Chapman, strike away again. Chapman taking a moment to collect his thoughts. Back on the rubber and ready to deliver the 2 2 pitch. Struck him out looking. And the Reds bounce back. Teddy's in the house. The good luck charm remains good luck. As the Reds win 3 to 1. And we are back after this.